Hey guys, my name is Max and welcome to Simple Biology. In this video we're going to practice constructing phylogenetic trees using a, a data table that's given us. And so basically what you'll find is that certain questions will ask you to look at a da data table and from the data in that table uh, figure out what kind of the evolutionary relationships between different species are. And so this video we're going to go over a few different kind of tricks and techniques that you'll use to do this. Um, like many of our uh, like many of our videos, the quiz attached to this video is going to be incredibly important, and so uh, go check out that quiz because there'll be some more pr uh, practice questions that will help you learn this concept. So in our first question, it says using this data set, construct the most likely phylogenetic tree. And in this example, the data represents percent similarity between the different species. Sometimes you'll see that the, it, um, the data represents differences between uh, certain genes, differences in proteins. In this case, it's percent similarity, probably in some amount of DNA material. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of zero in on the, um, the most similar uh, species. And so for this example, if you look at this 94%, that means that species B and species F are the most similar species in this entire data table. None of the other values, except for 100, of course, between a species and itself, none of the other values uh, is anywhere near this 94%. And so we're going to start with species B and species F being our most closely related species. I'm actually just going to go ahead and draw that line there. And so um, what we're going to do next is we're going to kind of look at what are the next closest related species to species B and species F. And if you kind of look, uh, species B and species B have an 87%. Um, species C, similar to uh, that species, species C and B, and then C and F, it's 85%. Those two numbers, 87 and 85, are the next highest uh, percent similarities of any of these other organisms. So we're going to put species C right here as the next closest uh, species. From there, we have this 80% between species A and species F, as well as 79% between A and C, and 77 between A and B. So that's between C, B, and F, you get about 77 to 80% similar to species A. So now we've done four of them, and all we've got left is species D and species E. Now this one is remarkably easier to distinguish than any of the other um, any other species we've gone through so far, because species D is related to all the other uh, species in like the 40s range, 45, 48, 49, 44, 45. You can see that this row is species D, whereas species E is about 70-ish, so 70, 72, 72. You see that species E and D are still that 44 percent. And then uh, species E and species F is 69. So 69 to kind of 72 range. So we're going to see that species E is much co more closely related to these other organisms than species D is. So let's put E right here. And D will be the least, um, the least related species to any of these other ones. And with this example, we actually saw that there's a very uh, organized kind of tree, a very um, a very neat tree. If we look, this is the answer. It's the same thing. And you will often get a more kind of complicated branching pattern, but this is kind of, this is a, an easier way to start off with. Even with six species, which is kind of a lot uh, for what you'll usually be dealing with, you can see that it's it's pretty easy to just, just look species by species how closely related to each other they are. And this is uh, as bad, about as organized as you'll ever see. So for our next problem, we'll also be using a, using this data set to construct the most likely phylogenetic tree. But with this question, the data actually represents differences in a particular gene. Uh, so rather than with a percent similarity where the higher number means they're closely related, in this case, a lower number means that they're closely related because that means there's been less time for the gene to mutate and become uh, slightly different. So uh, again, we're going to look for the most closely related species and start there. In this case, we can zero in on this three here. So that means that species C and species E are very closely related. So I'll put that right here, C and E, closely related. Next, we have 
uh, the seven, the eight, and the eight. These are kind of the next uh, mo more closely related species. You'll notice though that species B and D have an eight, but we don't actually know anything about them yet. So I'm just gonna leave that off for now. Uh, but also species A is equally closely related to species C and E. Because this is the most closely related organism to species C and E, uh, it's very likely that species A was this uh, next kind of branching point right there. So all we've got left is B and D. And this is very interesting because we know that B and D are very closely related to each other, but not quite so to other species, you can see. So what's, what likely happened is um, very early on in the history of this phylogenetic tree, uh, this lineage branched off from the lineage that eventually formed species A, C, and E. And this lineage uh, eventually branched off again for species B and D. And so you can see species, D and e, uh, species, species B and D are closely related to each other with this 8. And species A, C, and E are also fairly closely related to each other with 7, 8, and 3. But when you have to cross through this common ancestry here, when you cross between the two groups, you get the larger numbers like 12, 11, 13, 14. And so this phylogenetic tree is very consistent with this data table. Um, and what you'll see is I actually switched around the C and E compared to this answer choice. At any one of these uh, nodes or branching points, you can flip-flop the tree on itself. You can turn it around uh, without actually affecting what the tree is saying. So this is, in fact, a correct answer, even though it's not technically identical to this tree. It's saying the same thing. So here's our last question for this video. And again, it says, using this data set, construct the most likely phylogenetic tree. And this is uh, kind of the final way that you'll, you'll see the data represented. In this case, the data represents numbers of genetic differences. So it doesn't say with a particular gene. It doesn't say with a certain protein, uh, but genetic differences over some stretch of DNA. It may be uh, an entire chromosome even, although this is fairly unlikely for the numbers that we actually have in this. Since it doesn't say a number... We can just, since it doesn't say an amount of DNA, we can um, kind of ignore that. But uh, it doesn't have to be with a specific gene is what I'm trying to say. So um, again, because it doesn't tell us how much DNA is involved, you can get some rather huge numbers. Like here we have like 300s and 200s. So that many genetic differences um, likely means that these species are very distantly related. But we'll see as we go in. What you're going to want to actually want to zero in on are these very small numbers. This is 15, 18, 13 even. When you have very small numbers like that, surrounded by huge numbers like 300s and 200s, and even with 100s compared to these uh, what, like teen numbers, is that you're going to see that these species that these numbers apply to are very, very close related. So I'm just going to write this down. This is A and B. are closely related species C and D, or species C and E, rather, sorry, are closely related, and species D and F are closely related. And so we have kind of these three pairs of very closely related species. And it's actually kind of interesting here that we don't have species that are um, closely related across the, across the different kind of lineages, but we have these three pairs, and that's uh, plenty to go on from, for now. So the next kind of step here is to try and figure out how these three groups of species are related to each other. And uh, what we'll see, I'm going to change up the colors here. What we can see is that we kind of have a couple different levels of similarity. You have some 100s, um, high 90s, all around the same um, the same number basically and these numbers that are more in the 300 range that are closer to 300 here and so what we'll see is that organisms between d f a and b are more close, closely related to each other than if you include species uh, that are in the c or e range so now we see i'm actually going to have to rearrange uh, rearrange this uh, tree that i drew out because uh, D and F, we'll see, are closely related to each other over here, while um, 
C and E are more distantly related. And we'll get a tree that branches off a little bit like this. And always a good idea when you have a tree and you're not really sure about it, this because we have six species and some pretty complicated branching, is, just, is to just kind of go back and check. So species A and B have to be closely related to each other. That's good. C and E are close to each other. That's good. Species D and F close to each other. That's good. And um, the next closest are species D, F, A, and B. D, F, A, and B. All through this common ancestor here. And then finally we have C and E to the other organisms in, um, in that tree. That's going to be the least common uh, ancestor right there, the least, uh, the, the most amount of genetic difference. And this is where we see those differences in the 300s. And so you can kind of tell that this is a tree that's consistent with the data we've been given. And it is in fact the answer. Again, um, I've switched around multiple of these nodes, but the overall branching pattern is there. And you can, you can see that this is the same tree there. Uh, these are kind of complicated examples. They're probably more than you'll get in a, on a typical exam, typical test. Uh, but this, hopefully this video shows you the techniques you'll use and you'll be able to apply them to more, um, to all, all the different problems you'll see. Again, go check out our quiz for some more practice, uh, but it's really just as simple as that.